Welcome to Speak Easy with Shipping Easy. I'm your host, Rob Zaleski. I'm the head of the uh, brand for Shipping Easy. Uh, we treat Speak Easy as an informal event where industry professionals and seasoned small business owners share their e-commerce stories. So we hope you'll learn, laugh, and leave with some new ideas and ways to improve how you manage your e-commerce orders, your business, and your shipping. Also, I am joined with I'm joined here with uh, Josh Williams, our senior manager implementation here at Shipping Easy. Uh, today, we'll be chatting about branding for your e-commerce business and how you can brand the entire shipping process from order to delivery and beyond. So, uh, Josh, feel free to go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, thanks, Rob. Um, yeah, really excited to be back with you and and everybody else that's on. Thank you guys so much for joining. Um, Hope you were able to join the last one. If not, Rob did post a link down in there, so you can you can check that out. Um, I'm really excited about today's topic because it's almost like I get to interview you, Rob, being the marketing <laughs> expert. Um, I I just know the product and where to click to get stuff done. So I'm actually really excited to learn uh, a little bit myself uh, about how, marketing and how we can leverage shipping easy, you know, to 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 do that. Um, just to get started, like how would you define marketing? So marketing and branding, um, I actually want to start with kind of what it is not. Okay. So uh, what branding is not is just your brand name, your logo, and your website. Uh, that's kind of the table stakes of elements of branding, but that's not actually what branding fully is. Um, our partner Shopify does a really good job of kind of distilling it down mm -hmm. as branding is the process of creating a distinct identity for a business in the mind of your target audience and your consumers. So it's just as much about the people that you're selling to and the people that are keeping your business going as it is about your brand itself. And I think that's a really mm -hmm. important distinction that a lot of people don't internalize when they're thinking about their brand and, and what their brand represents. Yeah, in interesting. I I wouldn't. Yeah, I didn't go there, but that makes a lot of sense now that you said <laughs> that. Yeah, um, is like once you develop your brand, would you say that that's, you know, it's good for like forever? Do you do you like? Is it is it smart to kind of, you know, remix it every now and then? Uh, like, what would you suggest as as kind of, as a person yeah, who works in the field? One of the things about a brand is it it should be constantly evolving. Like, it should be something that evolves with your customers, with the needs of your customers, with your customers' preferences, where they are, how they're thinking about your product. Um, a couple of examples that I really like to use, and I'm going to start with a couple of bigger brands, but I will kind of distill it down to some uh, some other smaller uh, e-commerce merchants as well. But um, if you think about McDonald's, like I, I grew up in the in the 80s and 90s, and and back in those days, it was it was Ronald McDonald and the Fry Guys. It was yeah, the Hamburglar yeah. stealing hamburgers, you know? Yeah. It was really kind of goofy. It was really over the top. It was uh, very almost kid oriented, even when they were talking about, you know, some of the regular menu items. Um, and now it's kind of evolved into like more like hip families and and it's, oh, yeah. it's definitely modernized with the times. You, we went from Do You Believe in Magic, which was one of their major uh catchphrases back in the oh in my 80s gosh, 90s. I do remember that. Right? That's, that's <laughs> the awesome. song. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. and now it's evolved to <laughs> Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. And I don't even have to finish it because I know everybody knows what comes next after after that little jingle. Yeah. Um, and it's that's again, it's it's more about the customer and like the the feeling of nostalgia of you know opening the bag and smelling those French fries, of like opening the happy meal and searching to figure out what toy you got with your happy meal. So, you know, they've kind of internalized that love. And like I don't even really go to McDonald's that often anymore, but oh I, I still think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got kids, so You're right, I'll, exactly. I'll pin it on them. I go because of my kids only. Yeah. Surely, surely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like you, you can see that evolution oh, in the sure. way that they present the product and they present the experience of enjoying McDonald's burgers and French fries. Yeah. Um, another example, and I actually want to bring up some some visuals here because I think this is a, a really interesting way to to kind of show, and that is going to be Salesforce. Now, okay. Salesforce has been around since 1999. So it's been a long time. Uh, and this is their website from 10 years ago. So this is a uh, 2013. And honestly, there's nothing wrong with this website. It, it's it's very tech forward. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of a, a standard tech website, right? Uh, it talks a lot about the product. It talks a lot about like 
the benefits of the product, uh, but it's pretty cut and dry and yeah. it's very focused on the technology itself. Yep. But yep. if you look at what they've done now, it's very different. Like oh, it's wow. very approachable and there's animated characters and it's, it's more about like the experience and the adventure of gaining new customers and keeping your customers and, and contacting customers. You know, they, they have really dug in on this kind of like journey, the customer journey yeah. that Salesforce helps you go through. And their imagery shows that like, if you scroll down a little further here, you see like, you know, there's all this nature elements and all these, you know, the wild animals. And it's, it's like, you're going camping with your customers. for Yeah. Kind of yeah. yeah kind of I mean, but I saw something that said trailhead or something like that, yeah. even like references to that. So that's, that makes sense. Yeah, elements that's of their product that they've kind of changed yeah. and, and morphed into that. And it's more about the story behind the product and the story behind the, the person using the product than it is just about function and features. And that's a major brand evolution to pivot to, okay, what is this experience like for our customers? How do we make this experience en enjoyable, approachable? How do we make Salesforce not be this big behemoth that, you know, right. is completely unapproachable and change it to something that feels fun and, and kind of fancy free, but doable and, yeah. and, and something you're doing with your customers. Yeah, totally makes sense. And so that to me is a really good example of a, a brand evolving to really meet the customers where they are and make it an approachable thing uh, from a customer perspective. Makes total sense. I appreciate you breaking it down like that. Uh, you know, Salesforce is a huge company. McDonald's obviously is a huge company. Um, is there, uh, you know, offhanded, do you know of a company or a business that kind of does it well, you know, all the way around um, that can maybe bring it a little bit, you know, down, down to earth for, us, <laughs> or for me. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So um, there's one of our merchants uh, is a company called new wave toys. Uh, and they have leaned completely into eighties and nineties nostalgia. And I'm actually going to, I'm going to bring this, their website up too. Cause I think their website is just fantastic. Um, this is going to be really resonant to anybody who grew up during that, that era. Um, me change and my my dog apparently also has some opinions on branding. Yeah, she should. <laughs> so this is uh one of our merchants, New Wave Toys, and they make replicas of 80s and 90s nostalgia uh, and, and memorabilia. <laughs> so like they make these miniature versions of full-on arcade games. Yeah, and you weren't kidding. They did go all in. Wow. Yeah, that's like awesome. they got the benches, they've got the little VHS yeah. player, they've got the boom boxes. Oh my god. And gosh. for me, like you know, a, a, a web developer will probably look at this website like, oh no, dark background and bright letters. Like that's just, that's not going to work. But if right. you grew up when the, I mean, you know, I was around before the internet really became a thing in most households. And I remember the GeoCities websites and the flashing <laughs> banners and whatnot on pages. And, you know, and this kind of leans into that aesthetic a little bit with the dark background and like the, the kind of like 80s style fading sun uh, and even like, even down to the fonts that they use, yeah, it's for all sure. super reminiscent of that. And Absolutely. not only is their website spectacular in this, but their social presence is as well. Cause they post everything on Facebook. They ask customers what they should start building next and mm. you know, what kind of nostalgia would they like to see? And then they actually go make that happen, which I think is really, really cool. Um, but they have so much engagement on their Facebook page because they lean into the customers and getting them involved and making it a community so that, you know, it's not just a company making products and selling them. It's a company mm -hmm. serving the specific needs of their customers and the things that their customers have requested. Yeah. And from a brand perspective, that is the best way to build a long lift, a long living, thriving brand is to be constantly meeting the needs of customers and make them the center of what you're doing, even with your products. For sure. That, yeah, that totally makes sense. Just quickly on, on the social media aspect, right? I, I mean, we have all these different social channels and apps. And I mean, I, I don't think it's, I think I can say this, even though I'm not the marketing guy, but social media is pretty uh, important in terms of establishing your, your brand, what are some kind of, you know, quick tips either for those who have a social 
um, that they can kind of, you know, integrate into their workflow or, you know, if, if it's like, hey, I've been thinking of starting a Twitter and an Instagram and a Facebook. Can I do one? Do I have to do all? Like, what would you say to that? Yeah. And this is this is where it gets a little murky sometimes because, you know, there's always the 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 want to chase the new shiny thing, right? Mm, yeah. You know, sure. Do I need to be on TikTok? Because TikTok's popular right now. <laughs> and what it really comes down to is figuring out where your audience is. And the best way to do that is ask them. You know, you if you have an email list, it is quick and easy to put out a survey or even leave your email as something that not a no reply email, but a regular email that people can respond to and just ask your customers where they are, where do they hang Mm -hmm. out? Where do they get their information? Where do they talk to other people about the things that they're excited about? And you may even find that they're in places that you didn't expect them to be. You know, I mean, discord servers are a huge thing right now. Um, The gaming community has really built up uh, discord quite a bit, but people are building discords around all kinds of stuff. Um, there are huge Reddit threads or what are they called? I'm not a Redditor, but there, there's Reddit channels that are thriving. I mean, if you go on there and, and search r slash e-commerce, you can find questions and answers to everything going on in e-commerce businesses. Oh man. Yeah. And so it's a matter of figuring out where does your community go and engage with other people and finding a way to go there and be valuable. And so if it's Facebook groups, start a Facebook group and start inviting people, start inviting your customers and tell them to invite people who might be interested in the products and and start engaging in dialogues and getting them talking. Because once you start getting those organic conversations happening, that's where the real learnings come from. That's often conversations. Yeah, for sure. That that's well said too. Um, Okay. Let's go back to a little bit, you know, in terms of shipping easy and, and uh, you know, customers brands and their products. Um, like how, what's the best kind of way to see marketing in terms of the products that people are selling? Like what, what are we trying to, what should a marketer convey or try to convey based on the industry that they're in or the business that, that they're in? Well, you want to understand how your customers perceive your business and how they kind of interact with your products. Like for example, if you sell coffee, you know, coffee for a lot of people is more than just something that they get up and drink in the morning to wake up. You know, it's 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 something that they enjoy, something that they savor. They're connoisseurs of coffee. You know, it's 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 part of a routine that being part of that root that everyday routine in someone's life can have a profound effect on where you are in their lives. Sure. Um, I, mean, I can tell you, uh, my my wife and I, uh, on our way out to Houston one time, stopped at a gas station and found this amazing coffee that we loved. We looked them up, we figured out how to order it. And now we are on a constant rotation because it's our favorite coffee that we've ever had. Wow, nice. And, you know, I don't function without coffee. <laughs> <laughs> You're not alone. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, that has now been ingrained into my everyday life. And once we start getting low, I just start getting worried. <laughs> so yeah. We have to make sure that we get that coffee. I hear um, you. And, but it's also, there, there, there's values and views in that, right? Like, I wouldn't want to buy coffee from a place that I feel is 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 getting coffee from unethical places or is sure, or people yeah. are mistreated. You know, like I want to feel good about the the type of coffee that I'm buying and where it's coming from. Um, we actually just presented at uh, a coffee expo, and we learned a lot that that's very important to a lot of uh, coffee roasters is is making sure that they can tell that story of like, hey, we're doing this the right way. We're importing from these these small farms where people are you know, paid well and treated ethically. And, you know, there's a whole story there and building around that story can help change the way people think about your brand. Yeah, And that can be super important to creating the value that they see outside of your products, but the way that your brand approaches things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another example that I love to give, and I can, uh, I can bring up another screen share here. This is actually one of my favorite brands. And I just love everything that they do. Uh, it's a brand called Gooder. They make sunglasses. And I have an obscene amount of these sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> obscene. Um, but they're just, they're an unabashedly fun, honey, live for the outdoors type of, of business. Um, but they also really preach certain things about the way they approach their, their brand. So like they've even taken their social channels and distilled them down to having different handles for different interests 
in their audience. So they have oh, wow. one specific to running, one specific to weightlifting and fitness, one specific to gaming. And each of those handles talks about the product in a way that is specific to those audience members. Um, but even above and beyond that, they're very community focused and they are actually constantly coming out with sunglasses that uh, support certain initiatives. So like it may be a, a pair of sunglasses that um, they've designed around a certain initiative and the proceeds from those sunglasses go to support that cause. And they've done multiple versions of that that I support. And so that makes me want to buy those sunglasses just to support that cause because I, I see what they're doing. That's why you have multiple pairs. Yeah, that's totally the reason. It's not because <laughs> I'm a sunglasses hoarder. <laughs> yeah, right. Of course. Of course not. But no, that's, that's, a that's way that super they, cool. Yeah. Yeah, they, they align with my values and they yeah. tout that. And so that to me is like, okay, that gives me another reason to want to to purchase from this company because we both have some of the same ideals in mind. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's a great example. I mean, is it fair to say that, you know, some of the best brands do it well? Um, you know, when they actually are engaging with their customers, when they are having a conversation, as opposed to just pumping out new products, you know, ad hoc, um, you know, I would imagine that those companies do it better and, and maybe see better results that way from just having a conversation with their customers. I mean, you kind of alluded a little bit to that with the social aspect, but how important is that when you're, when you're getting off the ground? and starting your business to actually engage with your customer base. Yeah. I mean, th and that's the interesting thing about e-commerce is there are, there's multiple touch points throughout the entire process that brands have opportunities to interact with their customers. Mm. So good brands don't just talk to and at their customers. They talk with their customers mm. um, and it's not just about their products. And so, you know, when you're thinking about how to approach your brand, don't be afraid to have a voice, a perspective, you know, something that customers can really latch on to. Um, and just like, you know, new wave toys, don't be afraid to ask for input from, from your customers to, to make interacting with your business better. Even if it's not about the product, maybe it's about, you know, the way that you're marketing. Maybe it's about, you know, how easy it is to order off of your website. How, how much do they want to pay for shipping? Obviously, most people are going to say nothing. Uh, right. As actually, I'm going to I'm going to cover some stats that we um, we found in our most recent uh, research 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 study. But uh, you know, learning those things about what customers are willing to engage with, what customers are willing to pay for, what customers are willing to uh, continue to follow your brand through are really important. You know, I mean, we've, we've been living in some turbulent times over the last handful of years uh, yeah. with, with COVID and lockdowns and things like that, where a lot of mm -hmm. businesses moved online. Uh, and that changed the way that they interacted with customers because they were no longer having those face-to-face -face interactions with their regulars. Right. And so you still need to find ways to, to have that, uh, you know, lean on the counter and have a conversation with somebody type of moment. And, you know, figuring out where those opportunities are is what's going to really help build that and solidify that with your customers. Um, and along with that, like branding is how your business makes your customers feel. So um, oh, good point. Yeah. Some of these stats I think are going to really shock people. So in our recent research study, 41% of consumers said that delivery costs are the most important factor to them, which is actually up 8% from last year. So even mm. as we're kind of moving somewhat back into you know, some of these in-person interactions and places are starting to open up and maybe e-commerce is kind of becoming not as crucial to success, people are still not wanting to pay for delivery costs. <laughs> um, and 61% <laughs> said that high shipping costs would make them less likely to shop with a brand. So that the, the, the shipping cost element is going to be top of mind for almost all merchants. For or sure. I'm sorry, almost all customers. Yeah, yeah. But 72% of the merchants that we polled said that they were looking to reduce their shipping costs this year. So it's not be, surprising. Yeah. I mean, who wants to pay? For, nobody wants to pay for right. shipping. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, finding ways to pay less for shipping on the back end for merchants is going to be super important because customers don't want to pay for it either. Right. Now, that being said, 81% of the customers said that they will make efforts to support small businesses with 35% of consumers willing to make sacrifices to shop small. 
And that's then, cool. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there's interest there in making sure that we're supporting these small businesses and not just going and getting something off of, you know, a big box store or off of Amazon. Sure. Uh, and then back in 2021, when we researched uh, seven in 10 people said they would be willing to pay slightly higher prices for a product in order to support a small business. So, you know, there, there's ways to position your brand and your marketing when it comes to shipping costs. Um, leaning into your small business story mm -hmm. and making sure that people understand what you stand for, you know, tell your story about how you've started in your garage and now you've kind of like got, finally got your mom and pop shop or how you started yeah. this business selling four or five things a, a month. And now you've built up to this, you know, hundreds or thousands of, of products a, a month, you know, those kind of stories really resonate with people. And that is how you can get them to maybe pay a little bit extra for the products that you make because, you know, you make them by hand and not in, you know, a factory outside of the other side of the world, you know, sure. you know, these are made here in my garage by me and my spouse or whatever, you know, there, there's those elements can get people to really identify with the brand and be willing to shop more with you than what could potentially easy, easily be a cheaper or, you know, definitively free shipping option from another outlet. So leaning into that small business story is going to be super important for merchants to be able to capture that audience that is mm -hmm. clearly very interested in supporting small businesses. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that. That's, that's a great, that's a great point. Um, okay. So uh, and there's a question in the chat too. And I think we're, we're going to get to that kind of now, but now it's all great stuff. If we take the branding we talked a little bit about shipping. How do we put those together in terms of what Shipping Easy can offer to merchants that are just getting off the ground maybe or are, uh, you know, kind of experimenting with a side hustle or are seasoned, you know, uh, e-commerce sellers? Like how, you know, what are what are some of the things that that we, they can leverage in their Shipping Easy account? And yeah, we'll, probably I mean, go, we'll probably show them too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's where you come in. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Um, and this is this is something I, I touched on earlier, but you know, the cool thing about e-commerce is there's multiple opportunities throughout the process to infuse your brand and your voice and and personalization into the process. Um, one of the easiest ways, and Shipping Easy makes this super simple, is that you can personalize uh, and customize packing slips. So yeah. you can choose different packing slips based on the store or marketplace that your customer bought from. So you can recognize the fact that, hey, thanks for stopping by my website or, hey, thanks for stopping by my Amazon store. Hey, thanks for stopping by my Etsy shop. Well, not actually, not Etsy, never mind. Uh, <laughs> can't do those ones. Um, but yeah, like if you recognize where they came from, that's just like a little, oh, oh, well, that, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And you can even add extra things. And I, I think I was going to talk about this a little bit later, but you, know, you can add things like sending people to a review site to to review the product, you know, sending a personalized message uh, to let them know that you appreciate them. You know, there's there's ways that you can use this type of uh, shipping automation to to make that feel super personal to your customers. And Josh, I think you actually want to kind of take the wheel here and and show how that can be done in shipping easy. Yeah, yeah. Let me just give you a glimpse. Um just to that example. So really easily in your shipping easy um, settings, um, right in the, if you go to settings here on your, on your main page or on your dashboard, uh, right over on the right hand side there, here under label sizes and printing options, there's one there for packing slips. And here are some just, you know, this is my test account. So there's a bunch of different packing slips in here, but we make it pretty easy in order for you to just start either from scratch or to take something that we've already started as kind of a template and go ahead and modify it to have it, you know, show what you want it to show. Um, so if we just say that, that we're going to do, you know, a new packing slip, um, we have these pre-built templates. This is for eight and a half by 11. So if you're printing your packing slips on just a regular like laser printer, um, you would choose one of these. We have them kind of broken up into you know different different types. So ones with barcodes, um, barcodes and images, for instance. Uh, we also have one that um, removes the prices. So if you know this would be for like a, a gift or something like that. 
Um, and then they, we also have some templates here in the four by six layout. If you're just using your, you know, your regular label printer in order to print that packing slip too. Um, so say for instance, we start here with this one. Um, you can go ahead and give it a name. Um, and then we're going to go ahead in here and we're going to modify it. And what you see in here is it, it looks kind of code like it's actually not. Um, it's all of these things that are kind of in the squiggly brackets are what we call variables. And so basically what this line is saying here is take the store name and put it here, the store address and put it here, the website and put it here. Um, and all of those variables are up here in this toolbar, kind of in these three buttons. We have, um, you know, things related to your store, uh, things related to your customer, and then things that are specific and relate to the actual order. Um, and so you can just take, you know, if you want to show the subtotal, for instance, you would just select that and it would put it wherever your, you know, your cursor was. And at that point, I mean, you're kind of done. You hit create template to save it. And then what we can do in the store settings is go ahead and assign that packing slip to that store. So if you have multiple brands, like Rob said, you can have packing slip for each brand that has that specific logo on it, you know, that specific website on it. And there's never a chance that they're going to get, you know, mixed up in between your brands. Awesome. I love it. Yeah. That's, and that's, you know, that's kind of like when you open the box, you pull out what you ordered, you also pull out that packing slip and that's, right. you know, so that is going to be kind of like that, that first touch point when somebody opens their package um, that you can turn into an opportunity to make sure that they, they know about things that are coming up that you're doing for yeah. sale, you know, again, personalization to make it, you know, hyper personalized to that person. So that there's definitely ways that you can turn that into a really good touch point. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. I mean, somebody asked in the, in the chat, which we'll get to here in a second, but you know, how do, how do I address my customer by name so that it does feel personal? You know, we talked about having that conversation with your customer and um, we'll go ahead and show you that in a little bit of how to do that. It's, it's really easy. Yeah. And that's actually a great segue because uh, I did want to talk about email next. You know, email, though we all get a gazillion emails in our inboxes <laughs> these days, um, personalization is going to be where you really can shine. Um, and it's not just, you know, you can take personalization beyond just, you know, hello, first name. Uh, and I think that's where, you know, that's kind of almost table stakes at this point. Mm -hmm. And taking that to the next level is is where the successful retailers are are winning in the inbox. Um, and one of those, we actually have a, a tool in Shipping Easy a, as an add-on called customer marketing. And some of the things that you can do that are really cool is you can use delivery events. So either when an item shipped, when an item was uh, delivered to the address and use those to trigger email campaigns. So again, let's go back to the coffee example. You know, Say I order six bags of coffee you as a coffee merchant have a general idea of about how long that might last me if I am the average person drinking a certain amount of coffee a day. I probably sure. drink more than the average person, but that's not besides the point. <laughs> um, but then what you can do is you can say, okay, this package was delivered on X day. Mm -hmm. Let's go out about a week before I think that they might need more. And let's have an email trigger with a buy it again reminder and say, hey, I bet you're getting low on your coffee and you can put that in the head and then in the subject line, are you almost out of coffee? And I'm going through my emails like, Oh, oh crap. I am almost out of coffee. <laughs> and then you give me a link to go back to your store to buy yeah. the same thing that I bought before. Maybe have, you know, some product recommendations in that email as well. It's like, have you tried this coffee? Have you, you know, if you sell accessories, you can add accessories into the email. You know, there's ways to say, okay, you bought this thing. Let's either buy it again or let's suggest other products based on that order that you may also like. Awesome. So there's an opportunity to not only get that customer on you know a repeat business cycle, but also to increase your average order value by suggesting that they may like based on what they've already ordered. Yeah, that's super cool. Okay. And then also, you know, every now and then you're gonna lose some customers. They're gonna, they're gonna flake out, they're gonna forget to reorder. Um, and one of the most powerful things is a win back campaign. You know, I, I see a lot of successful merchants doing this and just saying like, Hey, we miss you. Mm. Hey, it's been a year since we've seen you, you know, Hey, you last bought, you bought this item last year. 
Has it gotten worn out? Are you ready to buy another one? You know, there, there's ways to to really customize win back campaigns to get those opens, number one, and number two, get that person back to your store. Mm. And then from there, you know, you can run social ads. I mean, I think we've all clicked on something on a store and then seen it pop up all over the internet <laughs> following us. Then it knows it follows me around. Yeah. Exactly. And so, you know. Win back campaigns can be super powerful because they get the customer back to your store, which either gets the immediate purchase or allows you to try to target ads or other campaigns around that um, to continue reminding them to to buy from you. Yeah, um, Josh, do you want to kind of give a little bit of a of a preview of of what the customer marketing tool looks like? Yeah, for sure. Um, this honestly is is one of the the things that I think sets shipping easy apart from other solutions out there is that, you know, it's your customer data that comes through shipping easy. And so instead of us just hoarding that and keeping it, we want to be able to give it back to you to use. And um, we make that easy to do in the marketing section. So over here in your shipping easy account on the left, you'll see a marketing tab, just click there. It's going to open up with your dashboard, which is basically a uh, you know a high level overview of what your different marketing campaigns uh, are are doing, how they're how they're engaging with people or not. Um, you can uh, you know see all of the analytics here. It's pretty in depth. If you've ever used a tool um, like the you know the other email marketing tools out there, this isn't very different than than some of those. Um, and it's just displayed right here. But what we want to do in what Rob was talking about was actually these email campaigns. So on the left, we're going to go uh, into email campaigns. And I'll see all my campaigns that I have running listed here. And it'll have, uh, you know, the analytics of them just kind of at, a, at an overview. And I can come back in here. I can pause them. I can edit them. But say we want to do a new one. Um, just click create campaign and shipping easy is going to ask you okay what type of campaign do you want you know to, to do and i you know campaign is a marketing term um how would you best define that rob i mean i understand what it means but how would you best define it so a regular campaign is just going to be uh and i don't i i want to make sure that i clarify here don't just send an email to everybody <laughs> <laughs> um it's super important to segment your audience so that you're trying to send the most relevant email to the most relevant customer possible. Okay. So, uh, and we actually give you a lot of opportunities in this customer marketing tool to create se different segments within your, within your customer list. So a regular campaign, I would say would, is a targeted email to a specific group of customers that share similar traits. Okay. That's and great. then an automated campaign is going to be something that is triggered by an event, whether that's, um, you know, their first purchase, whether that's uh, a purchase that you're trying to use for a repeat business opportunity, uh, a win back campaign, something mm -hmm. that's going to be triggered by either an event or a period of time. Okay, great. Uh, so that that regular campaign is like your proverbial like email blast, right? You like you, right. you craft the email, you, you choose what list it's going to go to, you hit send and it goes out. Um, we're going to look at what Rob mentioned earlier is what these automated campaigns based off of, you know, some criteria. Um, the beauty of these is that once you s hit play, basically, it just runs in the background and you don't have to do anything. It will work off of whatever you've set the rules to be and, and uh, you know, send that email out appropriately. So um, the one that you mentioned earlier, which I really like is the buy it again reminder, um, you know, for our coffee purchase people. Um, we uh we give you again we give you some some basic outlines to start with um or you know you can choose one and just remove everything and basically start from scratch but for for this we're just going to go ahead and we'll, we'll just pick this one here and then what it does is it brings you into this editor and this editor is i think about as easy as it comes in the fact that it's all drag and drop so you don't have to know any kind of you know, code or design, really, it is just, you know, I have a picture, I want to put it here, and you drag the the picture in, and it will land, you know, where, where you put it. Um, 
And then from here, we actually have different trays over here, which allow you to kind of keep an image library. Um, the ones that are public and free to use, um, we'll, we already pull them in from the, you know, from online here for you to use them with, you know, they're all rights uh, given to you. Um, but then also you can, you know, very easily just upload your own. Um, but for this, we're going to go ahead and, you know, any of the, uh, the, the text in here, it's all customizable. Um, you can remove or add or, you know, do whatever you like really here. And, you know, somebody asked, how do I address my customer by their name? Really easy. We just have this, this variable in here that says first name. Um, and so um, we also have a smart text feature, which will check, you know, go ahead and kind of similar to the Grammarly out there that will go ahead and, you know, double check your spelling and all of that stuff. But all of this, this toolbar up here is going to give you access to those different variables so that you can go ahead and craft, you know, the email to look, you know, how you want it to look. Um, you scroll down to the bottom, there's a section for uh, social. Um, so we have all of the, the major social brands, you know, logos brought in here. Um, if you want to add, you know, uh, you know, your Google Plus to that, you know, you can just check that, put in the URL. I know Google Plus is like a super popular social <laughs> one <laughs> social. Uh, not deprecated at all. <laughs> yeah, not deprecated <laughs> whatsoever. Um, okay, maybe maybe a Pinterest is better. How about that? Okay. There you go. There you go. Um, so you can go ahead and add that. And then, you know, it's customizable to the point to where you can make them you know, you know, a circle, you, they can be rounded, they can be, you know, square and black and white, so on and so forth. Um, and then one feature I really love um, is going in here and, and these little buttons down here basically allow you to see what your customer is going to see when they get this email. So if we click on, you know, the, the desktop, it's just going to pull up a preview window that will show you what it looks like. Um, or when you're designing it, sorry, it's gonna it's gonna go ahead and adjust the design landscape for you, dependent on, you know what what you're working on. So if you type some text in here, it looks this way when it's on a desktop. You want to also make sure that it looks pretty, you know, clean if somebody's opening it on their on their phone or their tablet. And this makes it really easy for you to just you know go back and forth between the two. Then when you're done, um, we hit save and continue. And uh, Shipping Easy makes it easy for you to kind of see where you are in terms of the progress of creating this. Across the top, like we're on step three, we only got two more to go, right? So we're gonna hit save and continue. And this is where kind of the magic happens. This is, that, this is where you set up the criteria of when this email is gonna go out. So this is the trigger. Um, so it says, you know, people who meet the following conditions. So if we want to send this email to specific customers who bought, you know, this specific item, um, then we would leave it on purchased SKU um, is equal to, and then we would type in what that item is. And that way this will go out to just those customers that purchased that specific item. If we want it to, um, you know, we can do SKU tags, we can do product category. Um, we can add multiple conditions to it. And then this is the schedule. So send when items haven't been ordered for you fill in the blank days. And then you can retroactively also, after you make this, go ahead and send it to customers who have, you know, bought, you know, bought this in the past 30 days. And we go all the way back to the last 120 days. So it's really powerful in, in that you know, once you choose this criteria, you say um, review, we'll just put something in here. Um, and then this says, okay, let's double check this. This is kind of the final stop. We're almost done. Um, does everything look okay? Uh, you can, here's where you can preview it on the different um, platforms. And then if you like, you can also send you or somebody else a test and it will go out to their email and land in their inbox or your inbox so you can actually see what it looks like, you know, in, in your mail app. Um, this would be your, you know, what you want customers if they just 
you know, want to reply to it, they get it in the inbox. If you want to actually go to you know, a specific person or, or a department, you can put that in there. Um, the display name is what it will look, uh, look like in terms of who it's coming from. And then obviously, you know, your subject line. Um, and we do have the ability to insert emojis in the subject line. I know, um, or I've heard that that is a bit eye-catching. And correct me if I'm wrong, Rob. There, um, there are stats for sure that, that support okay. that. Right. Okay, good. <laughs> um, cool. And then after we've got that all set, we've we've tested it. It looks good. I'm happy with it. We basically click on activate campaign. And then once that is activated, that just runs. And there's nothing else for you to do. There's nothing for you to check on. And um, I mean, you obviously can go in and edit it when you want to. You can stop it when you want to. Um, but that's kind of the beauty of these automated campaigns. It's really just a set it and forget it uh, type of email you know, outreach to the customer base. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. And we did get a question here that it, uh, it's a very important question, actually. I, I appreciate it. Um, you know, assume that these customers and Shipping Easy didn't necessarily agree to email marketing. Uh, it's going to run afoul. So um, I would say two things. One, um, I would pay attention to the regulations. You know, if you, especially if you have anyone in, in Europe, you know, there are the, the GDPR uh, rules that you probably don't want to automatically opt anybody in. Um, and I think the you know, California and Canada as well. So mm -hmm. you can. Uh, take those customers out of your list. You can kind of segment those out uh, just to be on the safe side. Um, also, you have the opportunity to ask people if they would like to opt in and then tag those within Shipping Easy as you know opted in for e email marketing. Yep. Um, and then part of customer marketing as well is there is a a sign up form that you it's a it's a kind of a, just a general sign up form, but you can put it on your website on a landing page and um, you can get people to actually opt in that way and then focus specifically on that list that you know for a fact has opt in. Um, and all of these emails are compliant with all unsubscribe uh, notations at the bottom of them that you don't have to worry about putting that in, that's automatic. Uh, and when someone clicks unsubscribe off of that, we will remove them from being a marketable person in your contacts list. So we do try to make that as easy as possible for you. But that is a very, very good question and very important to keep everybody out of hot water. <laughs> yeah, no, really important. Um, let me show just a bit of that sign up form because you did mention that. I think that's that's pretty, you know, pretty powerful uh, you know, feature that we pass on to shipping easy customers to be able to do. And um setting it up is like, do I have to know how to like make a web page in order to, for people to sign up, you know, for my, uh, my email, like, no, you don't, um, you can just, uh, go here to sign up forms. Um, and then based on whatever store you have plugged into your shipping easy, um, we go ahead and give you a URL that then you can take and paste into, you know, your social channels and send out. Um, so for instance, if we, um, well, I guess I have to activate it in my test account. <laughs> but if you grab, if you grab, just you know, copy the URL here. You can actually paste it in the you know the web browser and see, you know what what it's going to be, um, and you'll be able to go ahead and you know be able to give that to people in order to start putting a list together, um, you know, obviously with their consent, if you know as they're they're the ones that are clicking on it and giving you their their information. Absolutely. Yeah, and you can put that in a call to action button on your website and share it on social. Yeah, that's uh, a good way to to build your list. Again, that's something that you can put into um, your email campaigns to ask people to opt in. You know, if, if they're uh, getting their confirmation email, um, and it's something that you could put as like a short link on your packing slips to for people to go to. So there's definitely ways to find different opportunities to get people to opt into your email marketing list so that you can then market to them safely. Yeah, good call there. Uh, and speaking of other places that you can um, interact with customers, I want to talk about one of my favorite tools that we offer, and that's branded tracking. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, we actually found in our research that 42% of customers want shipping updates every day, with another 37% wanting just the substantial updates of like shipped, in transit, out for delivery, and delivered. So, Having that opportunity to communicate that with customers is super important. Now, Shipping Easy automatically sends the tracking information out um, whenever a customer, whenever you, you process a customer's order. But 
normally what happens when they click that tracking link is that it's going to take them to USPS's, UPS's, FedEx, DHL's yep. website. But what branded tracking does is it actually sends a branded email out with your colors, your design, your logos. And then when they click that link, instead of taking them to a carrier site, it actually takes them to a site that is completely branded with your colors, your social links. Uh, you can add promo images on there. You can have an opt-in form for your uh email marketing list. Yep. And it's a super powerful tool. They can even actually sign up for SMS updates so that they'll be getting text messages every time one of those delivery events happens. And it's a super powerful way to avoid distraction, to keep them in a branded environment where you are controlling the copy that they see. You are controlling all the links that they see. Uh, you can be promoting any sales or new products that you have coming out. And it's a super powerful tool. And we offer it for free right now to shipping easy merchants uh, right. as long as you're on a, a paid account. And it's, it's a super cool, like I've ever since we started developing this, I've been just in love with it because it, it just keeps <laughs> getting better and better every time we iterate on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's not something that all merchants have access to. And some of these tools are actually pretty expensive if you do them as a standalone option. Um, and so it's nice to have it just built right into your shipping platform so that you only have to go to another website to, to track your stats, to you know make sure uh, it's up to date with the most recent content. Um, and it's, it's one of my favorite tools that we offer to our merchants. Uh, Josh, do you want to kind of show what that looks like? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, you would think it would take a long time to set up, right. To pick colors and, uh, you know, put in all the things it it's so easy. Let me show you guys where it's at. So just over here in your side menu, you're going to click on tracking and that brings you to the branded tracking page. So, um, we'll go ahead and we want to edit you know, edit this, you can edit this information here. Um, we're obviously, we're going to bring your logo in. If you have it loaded into your store settings, we'll bring your logo automatically in for you. Um, your, uh, you know, the contact information, it's basically so, pretty self-explanatory. Just put the information in, um, select the stores that you, that you have connected that you want to be able to allow your customers to see that branded tracking page. Um, and then go ahead and click next. Um, again, we have whoop, we have it zoomed in here. Uh, we have the uh, the mobile <laughs> view, the desktop uh, view, and then you know the tablet, just like the uh, the customer marketing page. Um, you know, as far as that goes, so say we're going to do our you know our Equid store and our favorite stuff store as well. We'll hit next, um, and then here's where I can either change my layout. Um, I can pick my my theme. We have a couple of different, uh, you know, preset themes in here, or you can just get completely customizable and and do it on your own right there. Um, we'll go ahead and leave it and click next. Again, some of the same information um, from the customer marketing piece, your social uh, links. Um, so, and this is live over here too. So when you change uh, something here you'll see it reflected over here in the preview automatically. Um, so we're going to put our uh, social links in there. Um, and then, you know, if you have a return policy, that can um, go there as well. Um, we're going to hit save. And there, now it's now it's active. Um, and again, like, you know, we'll, we'll show you the analytics here. Um, and then here's the uh, the SMS uh, notification, uh, you know, ability that Rob talked about. Um, it'll just basically put a little thing on your page that says, hey, if you want text messages to let you know about this, um, go ahead and, you know, basically give us permission here. Um, and then there's some store specific um, settings that depending on how many stores you have connected, that you'll just want to go, go through and make sure uh, you can say, you know, yes, I do want it active for this store, but I don't necessarily want this active for this store, um, which is also really cool in the fact that uh, it can keep everything, you know, separate by brand. If you have multiple brands that are different, um, you know, depending on the different platforms you sell on, uh, those can all stay kind of in their own lane and there's no crossover there. And then, um, you know, yeah, like like Rob said, we, um, you know, we hit, we hit save once you've got this all done. And then the, the ability for customers to go to a page to see their tracking information where they don't even know that, you know, that 
it's that you made it um because we make it for you you just basically tell us what you want on there you know the colors the logo and everything else and we go ahead and format it and then obviously they they're wanting to know what's going on with their shipment so um you know we bring the shipping information in you know for their specific order for them to see right there and it's a lot prettier than the carrier pages you know if any of us have been to the you know usps page or the ups page uh it's pretty dry and not really informative definitely not good looking and um you can't promote any of your stuff on there for for sure and uh, you know this again is a is a place for you to be able to to take advantage of all of that. Absolutely, that's that is why it's one of my favorite things that we offer. I, yeah, for sure. So as we're as we're kind of coming to the the end of our our session here, I just want to kind of recap on a couple of things um, from like a life cycle life cycle marketing perspective. Um, so again, always be trying to find ways to create communities so that you can build that relationship with customers as opposed to just being transactional. Uh, it could be, again, via social media or messaging apps like Discord or Reddit. Uh, but just ask your customers where they are and try to find ways to be there too. Uh, and again, this could be as easy as not using a no reply email address, but letting your customers actually respond back to you uh, as ways to keep that conversation going and learn more about them. Uh, don't forget user-generated content. If you have customers who are sharing their experiences with your products online, you want to make sure that you are aware of that and engaging with them, not only on that platform where they are, but finding ways to actually use that content to help promote your products. You know, a lot of people, especially influencers, they, they love to be featured. So <laughs> if you see somebody sharing your stuff and you say, hey, you know, do, do you mind if we share this on our social? Or hey, do you mind if we use this in our next newsletter? You know, most people are super excited about letting companies do that. Uh, also, encouraging reviews. You know, People constantly go to Yelp and, and other review sites looking for where to buy products. So if you have these passionate customers that are, are sharing their experiences, ask them to leave reviews, share pictures, share testimonials, and then a, that user content can feed back into your own content and just create this really great feedback loop. So always be looking for ways to, to garner some of that feedback. And you can do that with email campaigns as well. You know, what did you think? Give us a, a review on the last product that you bought, uh, again, on packing slips or even asking for uh, somebody to, to go send a review from your brand of tracking page. You can send a, a link to your Yelp or whatever uh, whatever review site that you prefer to use. Um, I also recommend from a social perspective, creating hashtags and including your handle uh, mm. on, on different materials. You know, make it easy for people to find you. I, it's always frustrates me when I when I want to share something and I go on a brand's website and I can't for the life of me find their Instagram. So <laughs> make sure that it's clear and obvious how to tag you in in, in photos and and videos because that is where you're going to find the magic of great user generated content. Uh, just always make sure that you ask for permission. You know, just keep yourself out of trouble that way. Uh, most people will be happy to do it. Some people will ask for money and then you can just decide whether you want to do an influencer campaign or not. But uh, most people will be happy to be featured for free. So, and, you know, outside of the social element, Shipping Easy does make it pretty easy to do a lot of this stuff um, with the tools and automation that we provide to you. So um, we hope that you take advantage of these tools and, and we can help you grow your business. Yeah, definitely. Now, uh, looks like we do have a couple of questions uh, over here, and we've got just a few minutes before we close out here. Um, and a couple of these are a little bit more technical, so Josh, I might need you to to help me out here. Sure, let's see. Uh, so, so one person says, last time we checked, gift packaging slip could be printed only if the info transferred into the e-commerce platform signaled the order as a gift order. Is mm -hmm. it still the case, or is it possible to opt for gift packaging slips manually? Um, you can opt for gift uh, packing slips uh, somewhat manually um, via a, a automation rule. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be marked as a gift. Um, if you have multiple packing slips available to that brand, uh, you're able to kind of choose which packing slip when you're going to go print that label, say. Um, you know, that you want to print and one of the gift, you know, the gift packing slip is just one of those that are available to you. So you should be able to go ahead and print that um, along with that order. So yeah, it doesn't have to take you know direction from what the store sends over. You should be able to do that regardless. I think that's awesome. 
that's a new change. So yeah, thanks for asking. Good question. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and someone says that we are using your tracking tool. Uh, where can we find the clients who signed up for SMS notifications? And I think that is all in the back end. I don't believe that we pull that data. Is that correct? Yeah, I think I think it's a restriction. I could be wrong. Um, I think it may be like a, a federal something or other. Um, I, I do. It's not anywhere in the app. I can tell you that. Um, and I I believe it's because of a restriction that's put on us. Um, you know, to not be able to to see that information. Um, we have, you know, obviously what we have, we'll go ahead and, um, you know, give to you everything that that we that we have um, that you're allowed to have, obviously, with your customer data. Um, and I don't I don't believe that that is something that is available. Cool, cool. And then there's someone asking about uh, Timu. Temu, TMU. I'm not familiar with that platform. Um, I don't think that we, or we definitely don't integrate with it. So I can't, I can't speak on that, unfortunately, Samuel. So um, sorry about that. Not, not super familiar with that one. Um, cool. Well, that looks like, I think that might be all the questions that we received. So thank you everybody for being here. Yeah, um, really appreciate it. As a reminder, uh, by registering for this session today and attending, uh, you are eligible to win a uh, $100 gift card from Lemonade Promos. And it looks like we have some winners here. Excellent. So I'm proud to announce that the winners of the Speakeasy Shipping Easy giveaway are Bertha Brooks, Tia Hodge, and Simeon White. You all win a $100 gift card to Lemonade Promos to help promote your brands. Uh, they'll awesome. be there to help you with any of the marketing and branding needs. So uh, we'll email you the information on that shortly so that you can take advantage of that. So thank you very much for being here. I hope you make the most of that and, and get some some cool swag out there for your, for your business. Yeah, that's very cool. Rob, thanks for the insights into the marketing piece too. Marketing, I know, uh, you know, for me has always been kind of this elusive thing that is very important for a business and and I appreciate the way that you broke it down, you know, easy to understand and and you know definitely with the features that we have just available to people in their shipping easy account um that they can take advantage of some of those best practices that you talked about. So, yeah, I really that. hope I really hope everybody found it useful. Uh thank you guys all for being here. Again, we are doing one of these a quarter, so we'll be back at the end of August with our next one. Uh, if there are any specific topics that you'd love for us to cover, uh, please make sure to reach out to us on, on Twitter or Facebook and, you know, give us that input. I practice what I preach. I always want to hear from our customers. So if you've got some feedback and some input on, on this, on things that you want to hear about in the future, we are always all ears and happy to hear from you. So thank you for being here. There will be a replay of this coming out, uh, probably I think later this week. So it shouldn't be too long. We have an amazing video person that should be able to edit this down pretty quickly. And uh, thanks. Appreciate all of you being here and being Shipping Easy merchants for those of you who are. And hopefully those of you who are not will give us a try and check us out. So thanks again and happy shipping. Thanks, everybody.